seats. Rather than make for him, I just felt that he, he wore fairly loose, very different costume, maybe slightly, uh, not exactly scrubby, but a, a, a less svelte look. It, it was a more layered, a more, a, a costume, if I can't describe it, a costume I thought suited him. Very easy to work with, we loved trying to close, I think we were there for about four hours. <laughs> um, we did make some things, I mean we made the shirt and things like that. Um, now, <coughs> yes, Gareth Thomas, um, I, I really wanted to do something different for him. Big man, lot of presents. He, again, it could wear, I didn't, what I didn't want. I didn't want him to look like Paul Darrow. I didn't want him to wear the same sort of clothes as Paul Darrow. It wouldn't have suited him anyway. I mean, had to design again for the man, for the actor, for the character. Each one, when you look at them, when you read the script and you know the actor and you look at it, those visions arise in your head and you know what they should look like. That leather jacket, I wanted it to be strange extraordinary looking, but easy to move and work in warm because I knew it would be going all over the place. And he loved it. It was a, a greenish colour. The only thing I did notice that the costume designers who followed me, because I looked at it once in a ray, I thought, that looks different to me. And what they had done, they had actually made the sleeves a bit narrow. They'd, they'd taken a lot of fabric out of sleeves. Whether Gareth had found it easier to move without so much fabric, I don't know. But certainly when I worked with him, he seemed very comfortable. It might have been the costume designer who didn't like the look of it and decided that they preferred it with less fabric. Um, Sally Lubert, uh, very beautiful. That's the, again, with her, I used Lycra. Um, form-fitting like her, again, lovely figure. One of my favourite costumes for her um, was the black light of all over costume with the little, what we used to call figure velvet, that you wore it, called now. It was like a, a chiffon with white velvet pattern on it, and which you could see through. It was very short. I love that. That is my most favourite costume of all the costumes. But the two artists together, uh, Jen Chappell and Sally Nivet, so different. Um, one of the big perils, again, where you have, to, again, which is always a hazard, um, when you have two actresses working together who are equal stars in a production, they can like or want the same colour or the same shape or they both like something that I've sketched or drawn. But in this case, Sally Nivet wore a very different clothes from Jan Chappell. I mean, Jan Chappell had that lovely dark, she could wear strange offbeat outfits. But Sally Nivet didn't wear offbeat outfits, she wore a very much um, well, let's, as I said, to suit her. I used um, a lot of fabric called um, a kind of jersey. It was a very, very heavy jersey, which was very fashionable at that time with, um, with the fashion designers. And, and it was a draped jersey, and I used to buy antique embroidered pants. There was one that I had, a, I remember, it was for Jan, I had an embroidered pan down the front. Um, and they both liked this, this jersey, so I, I found it quite difficult sometimes to get the costume again to look very different. Even though there were such different looking women, you still had to, each one of them had to have their own individual style. And this I emphasised to them many times, if, if for instance Jan liked something uh, that Sally was wearing, I said, well, that's not your style, or, or Sally the same. I, 
of, of jazz. I said, it's not your style. Um, I, this is the style I think is right for you. They trusted me. Thank goodness, you know, that, that whatever I designed for them, they wore and, and, and I think it on the whole, keeping the difference. When you have a group of people like that, keeping it different, keeping each one different from the other, again, with a costume designer who has a particular taste in shape or colour or something like that, it's so easy to make everybody wear the same look and with different characters to try and keep a, the individual personal look while retaining the theme, retaining the look of the whole thing. So the overarching look works together but not everybody is dressed the same. So that is something that I bore in mind with Blake Seven. A wonderful show. I adored doing it. I adored working with David Malone, the producer. The first series of Blake Seven was in Fatigues. It was like Army. And when Blake, uh, so I did the second, I did those two years. But David Maloney said to me when I met him, he said, you know, science fiction is clothes and special effects and I'm prepared to spend money. And he did, the, the budgets, by the standards of that time, were very generous. And I could do more or less as I liked, like the silver, which I saw somebody wearing one, actually, uh, for Paul Darry, you know, the silver top, which was silver leather. And for him, oh, one incident happened, I was very cross Um He had a, a red, a deep red, fitted leather suit, which I thought was lovely, and round the collar, I had cone spikes, because that was the one feature of that costume, it was completely plain, but it was just round here, it had these spikes, and I was in London, while they were filming, do, doing a costume fitting, when I came back, the spikes had been taken off the costume, leaving marks, but I couldn't understand why, the, why these cones had been taken <coughs> off. But apparently, George, I think it was George Spencer Foster, the director, said, well, I'm not too sure about those spikes. And so my assistant took the spikes off. I was very, very cross because the whole look of the costume was pointing towards those spikes. The spikes were pointing towards his face. So, it was just, I mean, I didn't just look at the costume and say, I think I'll stick some spikes on it. <laughs> you know, I had designed it for a purpose. It's stick too nice. I, I feel cross now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm afraid we've actually been right over time and we've run right out of time. Fantastic. You're some talking so passionately about their, their, their subject and their, oh, their, their yeah, area. Good. And uh, I'm really sorry guys, we just don't really have gone over time and have to wrap up there. But thank you so much for sharing it and bring a lot of this to you.